Good evening all. Uh, Thorfire have very kindly sent me one of their red, green, blue and white LED bulbs for review and it comes with this uh, multicolour remote control. So this is the bulb, it's uh, my light, uh, 6 watt RGB WW, not sure what that is, LED bulb, AC 85 volts to 265 volts. It's an E27 uh, 27mm Edison screw. Now we don't tend to use those in the UK. We use B22 bayonets. However, I have an adapter here. So if I screw it into here, I can use it in our sockets. Now also they supplied me with uh, one remote control. This is a 2.4 gig uh, RF wireless remote control with these rather nice touch slide switches. So let's switch on the bulb. Now it's coming on red and that's because it's not paired with the remote control. And the way you do that is within three seconds of switching on, you need to press and hold the on switch of one of the four zone controls. The bulb now blinks and it should now be paired. And if I press and hold that button, it will come on white. And if I touch part of the coloring, it will come on as a color and if I slide my finger down the fader it will fade up and down. So that's good, that's paired. So the bulb kind of works in two modes. You can either have it in white mode by pushing and holding the uh, one on the zone that you paired it up with. You can also um, press the on and off buttons on the master but this will control all four bulbs that you've paired into these four uh, groups. So you probably want to avoid that if uh, some of the bulbs are in a different room. Um, then you've got color, which you select from the color wheel here, and you can continuously vary that color around the full gamut. And uh, in color mode, the brightness control is memorized. And in white mode, the brightness control is also memorized, but as a, sec a separate parameter. So if I leave that at full brightness, but then switch back to color. Color is at the brightness I last left it at. So I can bring color up to full brightness, go back to white, and then take white down to a low brightness, and it will rem remember that uh, and remember the color brightness separately. Now these controls have a really nice feel to them. Um, if I switch on the lamp, this fader, for example, doesn't respond immediately if I slide my finger down. It takes a little while to fade all the way down. If I slide my finger up, Again, it tracks me slightly delayed, quicker on the way up actually than on the way down, which does make logical sense because if you're turning it up, you probably want it to turn up more rapidly than if you're turning it down, I guess. Now there are also some uh, fading and flashing modes. If I press M, it goes through a fading sequence for white that fades up and down. Let's try M again. That's going through some sort of color fading sequence and there are nine of these sequences including flashing for parties I suppose. Some of them are a bit mad like this one where it fades blue up and then flashes it four times. I mean to me that's more of a sequence that a programmer thought up than one that would actually be useful in real life. And uh, the S plus button increases the speed of the sequence and the S minus button decreases the speed of the sequence. Now the remote control uses two AAA cells, but because there's a spring both on the negative side and the positive side, it does have a tendency to sit up a little bit. And uh, although I can get that one, no, even that one's sitting up a little bit, this one just won't sit down properly. It doesn't seem to make a huge amount of difference to the control, but it would be just nice if it sat down properly instead of sitting up. It does still work though. Now because you can pair any lamp with any zone on the remote control, you can set up some quite flexible zoning arrangements. For example, uh, one zone controlling one lamp or a zone controlling multiple lamps. Uh, it's quite a flexible arrangement. Now because the LEDs are kind of on this plane here, light only travels down and to the sides. The manual says 150 degrees, but what it means is that you don't get any light on the upper part of the walls if this is in a ceiling 
rows and you don't get any light thrown up onto the ceiling. So it is all side and down. And it's quite bright. The manual says that it's a replacement for your existing 50 watt bulb. Well, we don't tend to have 50 watt incandescence. Uh, we, we have 60 and I would say that it's a pretty reasonable replacement for a 60 watt bulb. Being LED, of course, it's uh, very efficient. Uh, the manual says it's 6 watts. On my energy monitor at the moment, it's saying 5.7. And if I switch to uh, a colour, it's drawing about 4 watts. Now, if you switch the uh, power to the bulb off using the room light switch, when you switch it back on, it takes a while to come on. It's well, I think it's somewhere between half a second and one second. Now, you get used to it, but it is a little bit of a delay. Um, it does remember the colour and the brightness level that you last left it at. So, for example, if I, on the remote control, now put it to full strength white, switch the lamp off, when I next enter the room, it comes on after the delay at full brightness white. So, let's have a look inside. Now, I've managed to get the... Uh, translucent dome off. It doesn't appear to be glued on, just uh, clipped into place. So uh, this should go back together quite nicely. Now it looks like we have four RGB LEDs, these here, and around the outside here look like they're warm white, uh, normal phosphor coated white LEDs. The printed circuit board uh, looks like it has an ST microcontroller here, that's a 3.3 volt regulator. There are four uh, transistors here. These three are the same and so presumably do red, green and blue. This one's a different uh, type of transistor so I imagine that's switching the white LEDs. The piece of wire sticking up in the middle here is clearly the 2.4 gig antenna. That crystal is a 12 meg crystal. The antenna is wired into uh, this pin of this chip so I'm guessing this is the radio control receiver chip. So this board, this printed circuit board, is actually a metallized uh, aluminium printed circuit board. Uh, we've got uh, obviously DC coming up here on red and black. The board is screwed down to a fairly substantial looking piece of aluminium which is acting as a heat sink and certainly this part of the lamp gets quite warm whereas the plastic dome doesn't get warm at all. And then inside there, there's going to be some sort of uh, switching regulator I'm not sure how much further I'm going to be able to get inside there. Let's have a look. No, that metal heatsink doesn't seem to want to come out. I can see in there an electrolytic capacitor, 330 microfarads, and there's also the uh, yellow covering of some sort of transformer there. So I'm guessing this is galvanically isolated. It doesn't matter too much because the whole thing's plastic anyway. You can't uh, get your fingers onto any metal part. So that looks like it's probably uh, the business, I think. Now in the remote control, um, these lower sections here are just thin plastic, so it's detecting um, your finger capacitively through that plastic. Uh, there are some button areas here, but these uh, fader areas for the brightness and the colour wheel are quite interesting. They appear to have just four zones. There are four points here on the fader, and it must detect the um, relative distance between two points, I'm guessing, in order to get that um, full colour wheel. Because you can be quite precise about moving your finger and getting the exact position for, for example, blue, red, yellow and green. Um, on the back we have the remote control transmitter, little antenna there. That seems to be sat up in some sort of socket. Uh, I'm guessing that this is the capacitive touch sensor controller. Um, or possibly this in conjunction with this as well. None of these chips have any markings on apart from the uh, wireless transceiver there. And uh, after my teardown of the remote control, both batteries are now sitting reasonably well down in their position. So maybe I moved something and uh, successfully made that better. So let me just check that everything's still working. And uh, yes, it seems to be fine. I can fade the brightness of it down in white and I can control the colour from uh, red through blue and green and yellow. A successful teardown. 
Uh, just one undocumented feature I appear to have found, if you switch it off with that, if you hold the off, it comes on at a very low brightness level. So you've got on, off, and I don't know, emergency light level? Not in the manual, that one. So the manual calls it a Thorfire G1 energy saving Samsung LED 6 watt household RGB bulb. Um, in the web, the web address is eCheen.com. And uh, on the remote control, it's saying 2.4 gig or GRT, is that transmission technology? And then it shows uh, a phone and a little Wi-Fi symbol. Now I can only assume, I don't think this is phone controlled. I think these are just other examples of 2.4 gig transmission technologies. Um, this appears to only be controlled by the remote control that's supplied with it. So what do I think about this uh, RGB bulb? Well, the 2.4 gig wireless seems entirely reliable. Uh, this remote controller is really nice. It's got a nice feel to it. The capacitive touch sensor system works well. I don't have a huge need for uh, coloured light in my house, so I don't find the colour system particularly useful. Um, it does have this issue where it throws light only downwards and to the side. It doesn't throw any light onto the ceiling, so it's a slightly uh, different uh, type of light to a conventional bulb or even one of these uh, fully glass LED bulbs. You uh, have to get used to the fact that your ceiling isn't illuminated. And uh, this is the item on Amazon.com. It's the Thorfire G1 color changing LED light bulb RGB E27 6 watt equivalent to 50 watt touch remote control and it's $29.98 free shipping.